there's a way to make an entrance. <laughs> My destiny. It was now a conspiracy of witches. Download Veely today. Welcome to the late 1800s. The arts and crafts movement is at the height of its fame and a group of men and women are busy rewriting the rule books of design and architecture. They wanted to make everyday objects beautiful and they left an impact on British design we still feel today. But make no mistake, this was about so much more than pretty wallpaper and embroidered cushions. These artists, architects and political thinkers were starting a revolution. Inspired by art critic John Ruskin and socialist designer William Morris, they hated the drudgery and ugliness of the industrial age. They wanted to turn the clock back to an age where a craft worker's skills were valued. These were principles, not just for design, but for life. Bring joy to work, share knowledge, and make beauty accessible to all. From the 1880s to the 1920s, they spread their radical message across Britain. Art could help to end social inequality. Which is a great idea, if you can make it work. To find out what we can learn from the arts and crafts movement, six 21st century craftspeople are heading back to the world of the 19th. The crafters are going back to basics. They won't find computer-aided design or power tools here. In real life, we wouldn't be worried about it. Just put a machine, <laughs> we'll go. Now they're spending a month together in a Victorian artist's commune. We're going to be up early, we're going to be in late. Mm -hmm. Yeah, OK. They'll be living the arts and crafts dream. Simplicity, fellowship, Thank you. and taking joy in work as they remake this stunning house room by room, without tears or tantrums. You start off all being very nicey-nicey. As the pressure builds up, it's really hard to hide the real you. Can they recreate the beautiful objects and high ideals of the arts and crafts movement by hand? Oh! And will recapturing the spirit of the past bring fresh creativity to the crafts of the present? have now been living in the Victorian house for a week. So far, they've transformed the parlour where product designer Elsa Parry created the judge's favourite item, wallpaper. <laughs> but the strain of six creative individuals working together as a team quickly began to show. I'm sorry, can you just listen to me for <laughs> a second? A nice this week, they're focusing on a room where men and women are meant to get along the bedroom. Our expert judges Keith Brimer-Jones and Patch Rogers want the crafters to create an oasis of calm. Victorian bedrooms were as stuffy as their attitudes to sex. But arts and crafts designers took a freer approach. They cleared out the dark clutter and let in sweetness and light. Can our crafters do the same? So let's find out who's making the first object, and that is you, Neve. So, guys, what have we got? Right, the first item is a bedspread. We've got this wonderful panel, original panel, very much in the style of what May Morris would have done. And what we're asking you to do is not uh, create a whole bedspread, that would take probably up to about three months. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> There's a relief there. OK, good. <laughs> the arts and crafts movement elevated embroidery from a lady's hobby to fine art. May Morris, daughter of William, was at the forefront. For her, design was the soul of embroidery. 
so this will be crucial to her fellow embroiderer Neve's bed spread. I'm trying to read your face from here, Neve. Like you're smiling, yes. but are you, are you what, happy? Happy and terrified. Okay. And how much work it's going to take. You know, small pieces can take up to eight hours. So, yeah, <laughs> that's quite a lot. Uh, Stephen, are you ready to get your hands mucky? So, Stephen, <laughs> what we have for you is these Mary Seaton Watts inspired gesso panels. We want you to design your own interpretation. Gesso is a mixture of chalk and glue, which is used to build up 3D layers on a canvas. This medieval technique was revived by Mary Seaton Watts. Like Stephen, Watts was a potter, but experiments in gesso led to her greatest work, the Watts Chapel at Compton in Surrey. Mary Seaton Watts was the master of the gesso panel, and it's that that I'd like to see an interpretation of her work within this. You look confused. Yeah, it's not a, a it's not pottery. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm like I'm more than happy to do that. It sounds good. So yeah, my own interpretation. What is it? If it's not arts and crafts, me and him will have something to say about it. So get thinking. But now, in keeping with the ethos of the arts and crafts movement, we will be formally asking you to work in pairs. Uh, so the next object is for our first joint builds between Rod with Abdullah. Oh, that's nice. Oh, hey, dude, that's nice. Our very oh. own <laughs> bromance. Yeah. Yeah, OK. You like each other now, don't you? Let's see how, uh, how you feel. <laughs> We'll see how far we can push it. <laughs> Chaps. Here we go. So what we want you to do is do your interpretation of this deceptively simple design. Now, basically, it's a bed. It's the commercial side of the arts and crafts movement. This is what, what happened when it went into the high street. Peel & Sons brought the arts and crafts principles of beauty and craftsmanship to factory-built furniture. So bladesmith Rod and cabinet maker Abdullah will have to design a bed which includes luxury details but could be reproduced again and again. So the detail within that is important. Craft and design. Now you'll be pleased to know there's no wood splitting. <laughs> because it's a commercial item, you would have had this wood pre-cut and delivered to the workshop in order to make this kind of item. And so that's what's going to be happening for you. And you've only got a week. The library is packed with drawings and books by arts and crafts designers. Keen to share their ideas with amateurs as well as other professionals, they wrote down much of their process and inspiration. Research is crucial for the whole group. As well as supporting the three main creations, Ilsa and Bryony will design their own items for the bedroom. It's going to appeal to the market. But also, can be made simply and quickly. Keith and Patch will then choose what they feel is the most authentic object from all the crafters' work. Hello, chaps. Hiya. How are you doing? Good. Good. So the master bedroom, the tasks have been set. How do we yeah. think they're going to fare? Let's start with Neve, the embroidery. It's just whether she gets that delicacy yeah. uh, uh, with the needlework, and also it's really in keeping with that arts and crafts style. Yeah, but also doesn't want to be too bogged down with that kind yeah. of like you know level of detail. I mean, there's detail, of course but she needs to manage her time within that. Arts and Crafts Embroidery was an opportunity for crafts women to prove the value and artistry of their work. A cause close to Neve Wimpress's heart. When you compare it with, you know, the heavy metal work and the woodwork and stuff, this does feel girly and crap but there's so much thought that goes into it and it is just because it's a light bit of fabric doesn't mean it's not hard mm. 
Embroiderers created texture in their work by using a variety of threads and different types of stitches on a single fabric. But Neve's main challenge will be creating a meaningful design which will work on a large scale. Basically spent the whole of the day freaking out. <laughs> um, I have very little confidence in my design abilities. But you know, you're confronted with such a, such a big challenge that your brain just completely wipes your memory of how you've ever done anything before. <laughs> Rod and Abdullah's first task is constructing a solid bed frame. Why don't I start cutting these lengths because that's set. Mm. First mark it and then cut it. In keeping with Heels Furniture, they need to use joints that could be replicated in a factory. I've always been a great fan of Heels. I think that Ambrose Hill designed furniture for the everyday man. I mean, his furniture was very simple, very plain, quite austere sometimes with a little bit of embellishment just to show you that there was some form of decoration. But Rod and Abdullah have an additional challenge this week, working together. Um, this, rail. this is a collaboration. This is the first kind of teaming up of two of the crafters. And, and I want to see that play out in a really positive way. That was his song and... Yeah, I, I am really happy. Uh, number one, I in really enjoy working with Rod. Mm. He's very, very knowledgeable. I like to plug myself into him and just get the knowledge out. Stephen Winstanley is a potter by trade, so creating a gesso panel means starting from scratch. You just have to put it in your mind that I am an amateur and you always learn and you always risk. Maybe. Yeah. I'm really excited to have a challenge this week. I see the panel's ready now. It's an opportunity to create something that is going to kind of stand alone. It's nice and messy, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Gesso expert Patricia Jackson will guide Stephen through the complex process, which starts by making a strong base for the panel. The canvas is strengthened with a mixture of plaster and hemp. This project will take Stephen out of his comfort zone, so Keith wants to help him get started on the right track. Hello. Oh, hello. <laughs> Hi, how are you doing? Oh, we're getting there. OK. Can we give you a hand? That, this is just the base of yes. your, of your yes. freeze, isn't it? Are you thinking about the design at the moment? I've thought about it, but I've not began to yeah. plan yeah. quite so far yet. Obviously, this is really labour intensive. Indeed. Mary Seaton Watts aimed to involve the whole community in her work. Like many in the arts and crafts movement, she came from privilege, but believed that sharing craft skills could benefit wider society. She involved people of different backgrounds by setting up classes and workers' cooperatives. Mary is very good at employing young men who she was training as potters and women who possibly had never worked outside the home before. Despite the movement's liberal beliefs, craftswomen still had to fight for recognition. The women in this house aren't willing to put up with any such nonsense. Especially Ilsa, this week taking on the role of project manager. It's become clear that we need to work out where people are super busy and where they have a bit more free time so that they can help each other. So I'm just trying to make, make it clear where we can build in time for work, time for food, and also time for play, because that's important. Um, Rod particularly thought it was a good idea. I think he is a person who likes clear outlines. Well, we'll just have to see how that works out. Well, I'm only happy to take um, help and input from somebody who I deem to be at least the same level as me or preferably higher. The 
crafters have already spent more than a week together adapting to Victorian life. Good morning. Hey. Curried mutton. Oh. Curried wow. mutton? Yes. Lovely. We have a long day ahead of us, we I think. That. So. Exactly. exactly. To take their minds off the curried mutton, bed builders Rod and Abby decide to tempt Providence. We're looking to finish a day early, mm -hmm. which gives us a day wiggle room, maybe even two, but I think in, in practical terms, no, no, no. a day, <laughs> a day yeah. early. So how was breakfast? Very nice, thank you. Yeah, lovely. We're going to have a picnic. Mm. Anita has given me a book. Oh. If you'd like to open it, there's a note inside. Thanks so much. Dear crafters, <laughs> the arts and craft movement were an active lot, very keen on fresh air and exercise. So, in keeping with their love of nature and the great outdoors, you'll be combining your picnic with some vigorous exercise and fresh water swimming. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> OK, yeah. amazing. Arts and crafts designers were inspired by nature, but their floral designs were also a political statement. In the 1850s, Britain was the world leader in manufacturing. But to William Morris, this industry was damaging both man and the environment. To him, factories were miserable prisons, but nature inspired beauty. So our crafters are also taking inspiration from the natural world. There we go. The enchanted sea. I just like seeing the pictures. It gives an idea of what was happening at the time. After a night of frantic sketching, Neve has settled on a theme for her bedspread. The cycle of the seasons. So the design as a whole, so we have this ring around the outside, um, which is going through the seasons. The circle is the feminine, and then there's going to be a blue square going over the top, and that's the joining of the male and the female in bed, I guess. <laughs> I love your fruit, so why have you included the fruits? Fruits that are appropriate for the season, but also have symbolic meaning almost a double entendre so figs and peaches and pomegranates they can all uh, represent a woman's vagina <laughs> as project manager ilsa wants to make sure the whole room fits the brief a light and airy bedroom she's decided to whitewash the walls and create a mural by hand oh shadow roller Whitewashed walls were popular in arts and crafts because they contrasted with the smoky industrial grime. Silversmith Bryony is also looking to nature for her item for the room, a period clock. Quite often in arts and crafts clocks, they would have just a very small pierced detail on the side or on the back. One little acorn. So the clock that I've designed, and this is a slightly larger version, but oh, I feel very school with my, <laughs> my ruler. These images came from things like the handles on the window in the room, as well as hearts. A lot of it is about the construction. They really loved nice big rivets. So um, we call it cold connection, so it means you don't have to use any heat on the piece. You can actually just drill and rivet the whole piece together. So I thought for a bit of fun on this clock, I would try and uh, make it without using any heat. <laughs> Arts and Crafts was about celebrating the making of an object. The fact that it would show rivets, um, some people would think that was a crude thing but actually it shows the making, it shows that a person's been involved with that object. I've got so many rivets to make, so I think I've got about 40 to 50 of these to make. I think I've made about 15 so far, so... <laughs> For the arts and crafts movement, it was important that work was relieved by rest. Unlike the never-ending toil of factory life, rest gave craftspeople dignity and allowed creativity to flourish. This week, the crafters will be relaxing with their Victorian picnic. And that means Victorian jelly. 
While modern jelly still uses gelatin made from animals, now it comes out of a packet. In the 19th century, it came out of a calf. I've scalded the calf's feet, so now we have to scrape them with a, a blunt knife to get the hair off. Scrape what? Sorry, I wasn't scrape, even listening. Scrape the, uh, the hair off with a blunt knife. It hasn't got any hair, has it? It's got little furry bits. Just, just... Oh, this is gross. Oh, it's hot! It's just been scalded. It feels like it's still alive. I mean, oh, it stinks as well. Yes, it does, doesn't it? Right, let's, let's just do the other side. I feel like I'm shaving its legs. Well, I am. Now the legs will be boiled for seven hours to extract the gelatin. This isn't shortcut cookery. I'm in a moral dilemma because I do eat meat. You don't see the process of where it comes no. from and this has given me quite the education. Yeah. The next bit, we have to cut this in half and scrape out the fat between the claws. Uh, mm. If you remove that, oh dear God. Uh. <laughs> That's a lot of animal for a bit of jelly. The crafters are now well underway. But Neve has put extra pressure on herself by incorporating more than 10 different types of stitch into her design. She's hoping the arts and crafts ideal of cooperation will help speed up her progress. So I'm, I'm gonna get every single person in the house in on this. What's happening here? Oh, this is a really, really satisfying moment. I know that Abby and Rod have a lot of work to do, but I'm getting them sat around the kitchen table in the evening stitching. <laughs> Rod and Abby agree to leave the woodshed for a sewing lesson. Hello, men. But they're worried about losing focus on the bed. I can, I can feel the concentration. Absolutely. Difficult sometimes to get the clear headspace to be able to right. get on with your project and produce what we're doing is producing a, a fabulous piece of furniture. Sure. Yeah. OK. Harmony is the, is the key here. Yeah. This is the most critical part of the bed because it's the most beautiful joints you will see. And what we will do is select which bits of wood we use where. Now, Rod, love him, but Rod does seem to have this kind of attitude that he knows best. Our optimist uh, deadline is this evening having this all finished. No, we're going to have we're going to have this up together by lunchtime. Let's do that. Okay. So I'm really hoping that that when Abdullah and Rod come in to get some advice about the embroidery from Neve, I'm hoping that those stereotypes blend away and they all become equal crafters as they are. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Rod, you seem slightly lost. No, I'm, okay? I'm totally there. I'm threaded. <laughs> You're threaded. So I'm going to teach you three stitches today, which is couching, backstitch, and French knots, which are the little dots in the middle. Ah, I've always wanted to know French knots. Yeah. Some rounder. Oh, I'm doing better, I dig it. <laughs> That's good fun. Sorry, Grandma, I really thought you were boring, but you were so cool. <laughs> 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 Although William Morris himself took up embroidery, it was his daughter, May, who became head of the embroidery department at Morris & Co at just 23. May was a vocal advocate for the craft, writing widely and lecturing in Britain and the United States. So you guys are going to be stitching the side panels for the bedspread. Do you have any estimation of how long is it going to take us to do this? I mean, obviously, you guys are beginners, and there are, you know, things that you'll come up against. Rod is anxious to get back to his own project. We need to crack on. We've got joints to make. Absolutely. We're trying to assemble the first half this morning. Cool. Can I tear you away from your embroidery, dear? <laughs> it's very thorough, Darling. isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Shall we crack on with our Shall joints? Shall we, yeah. Okay. People seem to enjoy it, which was good. And I think it was also nice that the boys realised that it's not just the heavy work that requires skill and precision. Okay, Stephen, yeah. it's a big day today. 
Are you are you commit to your design? Yeah. And um, you oh. decided to do it freehand. Uh, yes, I'm sketch. <laughs> no, well. <laughs> Stephen's garden-inspired yeah. design for the gesso panel includes a field mouse and that Victorian favourite, yeah. a fairy. I think he's got a fat mouse. He's got this little feedy help from Gilderford. The next step is to make the design three-dimensional by adding layers of gesso. This is based on a recipe created by Mary Seaton Watts and is a mix of chalk, linseed oil okay. and glue made from rabbit skin. Yeah, it's like pancake mix. But it doesn't smell like pancake mix. There we go. So we're going to dip it in gesso. Let's get this gesso. And just on. keep it sweet. The gesso is used to stick rope and felt to the canvas. Yeah. Watts created her designs with several layers of gesso. Just cut out the nice one. You <laughs> chop it off, yeah. chop its head off. That's its ear. <laughs> Oh, that's it, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, here's the mouse. Nice. Well done. <laughs> that's well done. The entire panel then needs to be covered in a layer of gesso and left to dry overnight before painting can begin. At the end of a long day in the woodshed. Rod and Abby have come indoors to tackle their share of the bedspread. So why do you reckon they chose us to do the embroidery? I think it's to get us out of our ivory tower. I don't know about towers, but I know that I have to undo my stitches now. <laughs> <laughs> it is quite, it's quite nice to sit down though, isn't it? This is mm. actually very relaxing. You don't have to think, because all you're thinking about is where are these bloody needles coming out? <laughs> this one is... How is your communication with the blokes in the woodshed? The blokes How's in all the... that going? Um, I think that they're very willing to help. Throughout my career, I've come across people that uh, really don't like taking too much advice. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, you know, they dish it out a fair amount, so I'm hoping... <laughs> I might be a natural gifted... Naturally born in Bordra, I don't know. So I, I think they'll be fine as long as they actually listen to me and respect what I say. I'm going to go creative a little bit, to be honest. I'm going to use... You're going off-piste. You can't do that. Yeah, no. yeah. You, 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 seriously, seriously right, yeah. you can't do that because if she needs um, split stitch all the way through. But it does look, it looks really, like, look nice. It's, it's well, you just... can justify your bit, mate. Do you think she'll realise I've cheated you? Uh, I think you spot him immediately, but there you go. <laughs> Here's some more hot water. Hey. That's taken an age. Just to get Life in the Victorian house means late nights and early starts. This is a, a smell from my youth. Right, it's carbonic soap. Despite their hopes of balancing work and rest, our crafters are facing long days of craft work and chores. <laughs> so if you're a, a woman on your own, having to... You underestimate thing, how strong women are. No, <laughs> not at all. I would never do that. I would never do that. Mm. Why is my nails washing that? It's on the floor. I absolutely swear this is dirtier than when we put it in. <laughs> <laughs> it seriously is. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> With the bedroom freshly whitewashed, this week's boss, Ilsa, can concentrate on her mural. Designers often use poetry and mottos in their art. So she's been searching for the perfect words. I spent a long time working on a poem. That really started by looking at some of the phrases that I've seen in arts and crafts houses. Uh, I wrote my own version. It's related to cycles of time, so day and night, uh, life and death, where you're born in the room, you might die in the room. So the words are, lay today's toil in the damp of the fallen leaves and let tomorrow's hope be born in the heat of the blazing sun. There's something nasty in the woodshed. 
It's the sheer slog of building a bed by hand. Already we are half a day behind. <laughs> <laughs> One reason for this is that having finished the 40 joints that hold the frame together, Abby decided to scrap them all. I just didn't like them. That's not the kind of work I would do. So I recut them all one by one individually just to make sure that, you know, when it's going out of this, this bench, it's perfect. We'll cut them and then we'll leave. But perfection takes time. So the men are praying that Ilsa can help them out by designing the decorative features for the bedposts. If you wanted to sketch up any ideas, um, bearing in mind this is a, a kind of semi-production bed. If you're happy for me to look at this, I'm, I'll come up with some ideas. I think it's going to be a really delightful thing to do. Yeah. All right. Brilliant. Good. Thanks. No problem. See ya. See ya. Ah, good. Harmony reigns. One benefit of the commune is that the crafters can make use of each other's expertise. But none of them have worked with Gesso before. And this is Stephen's own first attempt. He's worried it shows. I was going to put my foot through this thing. <laughs> I was ready to throw it because <laughs> like, I don't tend to keep work that I don't like. I've thought it's been a little bit... a, a little bit of a half arsed kind of thing. The gesso panel is coloured with a specially mixed paint based on a 19th century recipe. I just hope I'm using the right stuff because she told me how to mix it and then I've forgotten and I didn't make a note, so I've been using gum. Oh, damn it. <laughs> it might have been linseed oil. <laughs> Let's see how that goes on. Yeah, definitely was linseed oil. Neve has also been having doubts this week. So she's made use of the communal ethos and involved everyone in her bedspread. But it's been a new experience working alongside other crafters. Working with the other makers and crafters, it's been really inspiring and we push each other forward, but it's also slightly daunting because everyone's just so talented. I just suffer with imposter syndrome so badly. Um, that I think I'm, you know, going to be discovered as a fraud. <laughs> the team have now spent nearly two weeks together. Like the original arts and crafts communities, this is a mix of strong personalities. And they're still learning how to give and take. You need to have a certain degree of open-mindedness. You need to be able to absorb ideas. And I think it's very important they work as a cooperative. But listen, listening is very important. We're all used to spending a lot of time on our own. We're all used to being our own bosses. And so suddenly having five other people is possibly harder being a creative commune who have all been previously self-employed because we're so used to our own time and space and autonomy. Bryony spoke truer than she knew. Before Ilsa's had a chance to think about design suggestions for the bed, she finds that Rod and Abby have gone ahead with their own ideas. Oh dear. The work that you and I had spoken about, and we both put some ideas together, became irrelevant. We are good designers in our own right, and what happens is you, we, we will always come up with our own solution. So the embellishments, I thought, would be finished on Tuesday the, 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 to the, come in line with your bed frame? Um, yeah, we didn't really want to leave it that long. But you gave me that day, so I didn't give you it. No, no, well, whatever. I think that everything we're talking about, everyone's aligned with it. What is the problem? There is no problem. There isn't a problem. You're a project manager. You're not the designer of the whole thing. So, I know that. Um, so we are all designers. But that's why everyone's input. So you are in line. Yes, yeah, that's what I'm trying to say to you. Yeah, Joe, your project. Mm. Okay, I'll leave it to it. Yes, yeah, thanks. Arts and crafts communities were built on the ideal of craftspeople sharing skills and beliefs. But they had mixed success. Some guilds lasted for decades, others crumbled in the face of realities. Money for one. Our crafters are facing the reality that hell is other people. I don't feel that I can talk or reason with Rod in particular because he doesn't listen. 
and he will not hear anybody else. He likes the sound of his own voice. They keep talking about collaboration, but they're talking about their personal collaboration. I think it's repairable. I think it'll show. I'm feeling fed up, to be honest. I feel like I don't want to be here. Sorry. I came here to, to learn new things, to make new friends and to have some fun. And it's been really hard to do most of those things because of the mindset that those two in particular have. It's supposed to be about the romanticism of design and being working together collaboratively and learning things. They're missing the point completely. The group now come together to try to agree where the bed will actually go. Is that how wide the bed is? Yep. Oh, OK. Are you happy for it to go there, Abby? Imagine you are in your bed and the door opens mm -hmm. and you have no privacy. Whereas if the bed was on the other side, when the door opens, you have full privacy. Look at how beautiful that light is on the floor right there. Like, that is just going to be hitting the bed. The light falling on the bed is perfect, so I'm not seeing how the privacy is such a big an issue. Well, it's a team decision. I know. I'm just giving my opinion. Is that OK? Because I feel I like I can't give my opinion. I didn't say anything. I'm sorry if you're feeling... Every time I speak, you go, well, it's about the team. Yes, that's why I've called everyone into the room, to have that discussion. I have an opinion, and yes, the rest and we're of... asking it. Great, so decision made then. Perfect. I think the main thing we need to work out, once we've got the bed, is where the table's going to go, so then you can think about having your mural above the table. At this point, so, I don't care where it goes, I just want to get it on the wall. Yeah. The crafters are less than halfway through their month together. They've realised that to make a success of communal living, they'll need to improve communal communication. I'm not being ignorant to what no. you guys are working on and how hard it is, I know that. But, you know, the fact, I'm sorry, Abby, but it's so engrossed in what you're doing that stuff's getting missed. What's very important is that share the opinions at the table. Yeah. Because when one person's chats, um, the tension starts building because people have all the ideas. Yeah. It'd be really weird if there weren't any clashes. In a proper arts and crafts workshop, this is exactly what would happen. We are all on the same page. The group resolves to start meeting more regularly to discuss their progress, in the hope that prevents more tension. Don't read into an expression or something else that, you know, I hate you or something. I don't, I would say. I'm, a, I'm an honest person, and, and, and so is Abby. We don't. No, Thanks. Just... Thanks for this, you too. Thank you. The air cleared, the crafters can turn their attention back to their projects. Hey. Hey, how's yes, it Nice and calm in here. You're getting really good at that, aren't yeah. you? Yeah. <laughs> Enjoying it. Getting yeah. jiggy with your stitches. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant, but I'm worried that you're going to be stressed yourself getting things finished at the end. No. I'm going to push it to you. It's like it's been done on a machine. Right. I love it. For a twist in it. You can take the bottom. Thank you. Thank you. Got it? Well done. So, okay. Relationships on the mend, the crafters take a break. With the long heralded High Victorian ceremonial picnic. I think a picnic sounds good because we could all do with a bit of time away from the house. Victorian picnics were extravagant, gut busting affairs with roast chicken, duck, tongue and much else besides. Sweet treats might include cheesecakes, steamed puddings and, of course, calves foot jelly flavoured with apples and a cherry on top. That's nice. Thank you. Who's hungry? Yay. Yay. Not for uh, cow's leg jelly, thanks very much. <laughs> That's a sweet thing with jam. 
That's so much food. <laughs> oh, it's sweet. Yeah, it's uh, the cheesecake. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, cheesecake. <laughs> the way to anyone's heart, it seems, is through their stomach. No, this is cow's um, leg. Oh, it's the jelly. Oh, no. Who's going to try one of the jellies? Oh. Yeah, all right. Come on. I think no. I'm a shot. Yeah. <laughs> Not a spoon. Sure it's you know? like a wobbly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The irony is I'm sat here eating chicken. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm eating meat. Whilst pulling the face at him for eating the cow's leg. <laughs> <laughs> the picnic gives the group a chance to reflect on life in the Victorian bubble. It worries me how um, how normal it feels already. So mm. we've been here a week and a bit, mm. and I get up every day and just put on my clothes like I always would. I don't even question it. Fortunately, I don't feel the same. What's the worst bit for you? The length of the skirt. I'm tripping up. <laughs> um, under skirt has been stashed. For now, the crafters can relax with each other. But tomorrow, it'll be back to the workshop, ready for the final push. my breakfast. Very in touch with nature, you know. Do you want some? Yeah, go on. <laughs> it's very good, mate. Mm. Lovely. The crafters have just one full day before they present their bedroom projects to Keith and Patch. It's the last day, basically, basically today. We are trying to make sure that everything is going as fast and accurate as possible. No mistakes allowed. Uh, nearly done, really. Um, it's just finishing this gold circle and then putting it together that's left. But I'm now working with the nightmare gold thread. Arts and crafts embroiderers used contrasting silk, wool and metal threads to add texture to their designs. But metal threads can also add problems. Gold thread, unlike most normal thread, just unravels as soon as you start to work with it, so it just becomes all these difficult little strands. I've been worrying that I haven't done enough, but given that kind of yesterday I started at nine-ish and was still embroidering at 11 o'clock at night, like, I don't think that there's anything else more that I could have done, <laughs> you know. Can't really go any further in the time. So better appreciate it. <laughs> At the moment, I'm experimenting with different paints and pigments. I've got kind of a, a limited palette of period colours. There's quite a lot to do still, uh, but it's important that I don't give others a sense of panic and rush them through but I imagine they'll be working into the night. There's always a good six or seven hours worth of last minute detailing that takes way longer than you think it's going to. Bryony's is the only project which seems to be coming in on schedule thus far. I love this part when it's all starting to come together. I pierced this shape out and then just curled over the different sections so that they create the knuckles for the hinge. So I'm really pleased with that. <laughs> so it's just keeping it simple. And that's the thing I love about this kind of arts and crafts copper work. So the next bit is going to be fun and scary at the same time because it's literally putting all the pieces together. Despite spending 50 hours on the build, the bed is still a long way from the polished look of Heels Factory Furniture. The whole thing still needs to be sanded, oiled and given a decorative flourish. I'm putting metal into wood, bit of an unknown. 
That's looking good. These little sections will be on the front of the bed. A copper and ash theme. It should look really nice, but we don't have a lot of time to do that. Are you saying, Grace? So <laughs> <laughs> tuck in when you're ready, guys. Um... Is that Grace? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lunchtime is a chance for dispatches from the Arts and Crafts coalface. The gesso, it's a funniest thing to kind of work in. So, <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll put it up on the wall. You know, I wouldn't have it <laughs> <laughs> on my bedroom wall. If we're talking about William Morris and, and Jane, it's the first time they've made things. You know, not everything's going to be exactly how you want it. So yeah, don't I mean, give up hope. I'm happy to give up hope. <laughs> <laughs> to get the bedroom ready in time, the crafters need to help each other, especially Rod and Abby. Having started the week boasting they'd finish early, they're now the furthest behind schedule. So, we've come to help you sand. Okay, great, great stuff. This is amazing. So, a rescue party has gathered in the woodshed. Oh, I love the sound. Oh, I hate the sound. Oh, it sets my teeth on edge. <laughs> this is uh, almost the final stage of the bed, and who says miracle doesn't exist? <laughs> These angels came, and uh, and they are definitely pushing the project about an hour and a half forward. Um, thank you, guys. Hey. Our project being delayed definitely has has put the pressure on other people as well in the team. This has been Neve's first solo project in the Victorian house and she's found the pressure particularly hard. Neve has been stressed this week. Uh, you can see it in her face. I think it's just the enormity of the task. Neve displays a little bit of anxiety around some of the pressured aspects of the task. I think she has a fear of failure. All the embroidery is finished. It's basically a case of putting the side panels on. I mean, you know, I know that I've been working really long hours and I've pretty much done everything that I could have done, um, but it still doesn't feel enough to me. Um, so, tiring, mostly. Really, really tiring. Yeah. <laughs> Just think I haven't done a very good job. After a week of grinding graft, the crafters have risen especially early. Also, it's really hard not to stand on your dress. <laughs> Shit, sorry. Why? Because there's the small matter of a bedroom's main feature still to be sorted out. There we go. Okay, thanks. Perfect. It's a bed. The final decorative touch is a piece of classic William Morris fabric. Bit of a mad dash at the end. Yay. It can stand on the. Oh, yeah, it's possible. Lovely. Okay, so we've got 15 minutes. I haven't minutes. shaved. You're not shaved? No, you're not. I'm not shaved. I'm not sure either, man. <laughs> Guys, we've got 15 minutes left, so once this is done, yeah, sure. can we get the rest of the furniture in, please? The crafters have chosen other pieces of period furniture to complete the transformation of the bedroom. Oh, that's good. It's not doing you any favours, is it? Never does. Including a factory-produced heels desk. Yeah. Excellent. The bedroom is complete, and the crafter's work will be ready to be assessed by Patch and Keith. They'll decide who'll be awarded the prestigious Object of the Week, the work which best captures the spirit of the arts and crafts movement. The final objects have brought a sense of the garden and of the cycle of the seasons into the bedroom. From the ring of flowers on Neve's bedspread, to Ilsa's stenciled poem on the wall. Oh, it's a 
bedroom. Wow. Look at that clock. Beautiful. Look at the decoration on the side, the lake walls. No, no, no. A little love heart. Oh, let me see. It's incredible, isn't it? It works, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's got yeah. it, yeah. God, that's beautiful. A little door on the back. Oh, my goodness me. Oh, that, that is, is a... beautifully made. You've got the riveting, which really shows the actual making of the object. It's beaten copper, and that, that over, over time, that will patinate down to a lovely, lovely, dark, rich, chocolate brown mm. colour. Yeah, it'll get better with age. Mm. Are you, I think you're drooling there, Patrick. I don't know, I think I might be. <laughs> <laughs> that ticks all the boxes, Debbie. Absolutely. Should we have a look at this bedspread? Oh, that's oh, that, lovely. Isn't it? I like that. that. I like Lots. that a lot. Me too. That's fantastic. This is... Look at the little bit. Beautifully bird. simple, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I love that. I think it really evokes that simplicity yes. of the arts and crafts movement. It's got that real naivety, yet it's got control, but mm. there's a lot of work in that. I love the fact that she's she's used these different threads yeah. to create these different, Absolutely. different I mean, textures. Of... And this gold thread that yeah. runs through the whole thing. And the colours. It is colors wonderful. Just... It's got a lot of love in it. Mm. The bed, I think, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. it's, I think it's, you know, it's got everything that they've been asked to do. They've almost got a little bit of contrast between the different colours of the ash, which is nice to give it a bit of form. You could see it being sold in heels, couldn't you? Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the gesso panel. Okay, for me, it doesn't work. You know, obviously, he was struggling with it. It's a completely different medium to what he's used to. A gesso frieze, they were kind of crude. But I think this takes it one step further. Yeah. Is that a rat or a squirrel? It's very much a rat. <laughs> yeah. that, I, mean, that... I quite like the rats. Yeah, no, he's cute, the rat. I like the rats. He's cute. I noticed this on the wall behind us. This is yeah, rather nice, motto. isn't it? Lay today's toil to rest in the damp of the fallen leaves and let tomorrow's hope be born in the warmth of the golden sun. And these flowers float, floating away and the leaves, it's got a fluency in it. She knows what she's doing with a paintbrush as well. It's beautiful. Well, got that wonderful job now of picking what we think is uh, the one that's the most representative of the arts and crafts movement. It, for me, this, this week is, is harder, than, harder than last week in a way. Yeah. Right, we've got to make a decision, guys. Cup of tea? Yeah, why not? Yeah, right. let's do that. Hello. Hello. Hey. Hey. Good to see you. Um, Ilsa, well, let's start with what you produced then, Ilsa. This phrase I is beautiful. A... It's yeah. really beautiful. I mean, the sentiment is absolutely wonderful. And I think that, you know, the, the owl to send you to sleep, the lark, is it a lark? Mm -hmm. Yeah, to bring you to wake you. And the arts and crafts movement was definitely all about that. Mottos were in everything. I think it's brilliant. I love Thank it. Thank you. Yeah, yeah very good. Love it. All right, we're going to move on to the bed, which was the first of our pairings, our very own bromance, although you're both standing at opposite ends of the room now. So, <laughs> Abdullah and Raz, when did you finish it? Um, about eight o'clock this morning. So you've worked yeah. through the night? Not quite, no. Went to bed at two, got up at three. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I would like to move next to Ross. You can move <laughs> wherever you like. It happens Give that we are hug, actually, uh, yeah. I mean, the heels bed we saw, I mean, I think that it, it, it does all of those things. It ticks all those boxes. The um, diamond panelling with the, with the copper inlay is fantastic. I, I like what you've done here. And, and it was really lovely to see you both working together. Mm. It was I, really nice. Stephen, we'll talk about your gesso freeze. I just kind of went for it and gave it a wee shot and I tried it out and, you know, had a bit of a learning experience with it. The idea of the angel in the wheat and the rat, I guess it's a rat. It could be. It could be a harvest mouse. Maybe. On steroids. <laughs> so it could be ways. a rat. <laughs> well, obviously, you know, this, this is a different medium to what you usually work in. Did you really, really notice that? I doubt it's the best thing I could have done. Is it a process that you'd like to, to sort of repeat? To sort of I'm get... I'm going to do it. I will do it. Right, I've got okay. a, You know, yeah. I've got a bit of a better understanding now that I've actually given it a, a bit of a run-through. 
That's really interesting because that means you've learned something and you're going to take that forward and use it again. Oh, oh. Tell us. Oh. Yeah, no, it's good. <laughs> Moving on, shall we talk about the bedspreads? Yes. The fern is stunning. I think that fern is just leaps off the bedspread. I mean, obviously, the arts and crafts movement, it doesn't, it's not just about a pretty object. Yeah. It's all about the sentiment also. Yeah. And I think you've picked up on that beautifully. I mean, those, those, those fruits... The forbidden fruits within the bed. It's, it's great. It's lovely. There's, there's beautiful sentiment. It has meaning, which is the important thing about the arts and crafts movement. I think it's beautiful. And this whole ethos that you were all sitting around working on, mm. on the border, just really ties into the whole arts and crafts movement. Thank you. <laughs> I think we need to part the bromance just to have a good look at this, this beautiful object behind you. Bryony, your copper clock. Um, I'm really pleased with it. I like to take it home. <laughs> and it's like a jewel in the room, isn't it? It shines, it, it, just, it just says, well, it just says craftsmanship to me. If I saw that in the sale room, I would think it was an original piece of arts and crafts. It's going to get it's me crying now. <laughs> stunning piece. And all the hammering. I mean, it's a lot of work, actually, yeah. and I think it's a great thing. We had a really, really, really difficult time deciding the item of the week. But the one that we've chosen is its something about it that the more we think about it, the more we look at it, the more emotional we feel about it. And it's something quite special, actually. The object that, we're, that, that we've chosen, it has a spirit. Yeah. And that's the arts and crafts ethos. That is what transcends through the items. Which is why the item is Neve, your beautiful bedspread. Yeah. I've been thinking it's rubbish this whole week. <laughs> Honestly. How can you think that? Yeah. I was not expecting my object to be picked. Yeah, just because I didn't think it was very good. Um, so, sorry. I just, just didn't believe in myself or in my design or anything really. And I'm hoping that I can try and remember it and try and tell myself that I can do it when I think I can't. Yeah. There's a story that will stay with that forever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, your story. Yeah. Well, well, well. <laughs> After a week of mighty stress and strain, the crafters can finally relax with some fresh water swimming. Everybody's made it so easy. And, you know, there has obviously been tensions because, you know, we're sort of becoming like a family. We're with each other 24-7, so it's not going to be happy and smiley all the time, but we work through those and we get over those, and then it's, you know, the next day it's fine again. Oh, damn. I'm a bomb oh, yeah. But starting tomorrow, ah, it's back to the drawing board. <laughs> Next week, Stephen can finally find his rhythm on the potter's wheel as the crafters work together to transform the dining room. Oh my God, something's gone seriously wrong here. <laughs> but will they finally be in harmony with each other? Or will Discord rule? Oh, oh I've done it again. <laughs>